people are more aware of financial fraud than ever before. From crypto influencers to suspicious looking text messages, we are all trained to be on the high alert about everything. Unfortunately, the fact that we now suspect everything is a scam is a big reason why financial fraud is at an all-time high. I lost the majority of my life savings in a dating scam. Well, you're tightening the belt this year and saving money, but there are a handful of growing scams that are designed to steal crypto your money. Crypto dating scams, where fraudsters convince people to put their money into fake cryptocurrency investments. But in 2023, the scams are a lot more sophisticated than you may have realized. Society loves con artists. Don't believe me? Think about this. We are all celebrating Sam Bankman Freed being convicted of defrauding millions of investors out of billions of dollars. For now. But the same crypto enthusiasts that lost money when FTX collapsed probably at one point or another celebrated the wealth and excess of the Wolf of Wall Street, another convicted fraudster who stole millions of dollars from investors. The future is clear. In 40 years, the insufferable hustle bros will be liking inspirational quotes pasted over the top of SBF. Okay, that might be funny to think about, but it happens all the time. The reporter Aaron Griffith with the New York Times wrote about the hundreds of fake companies with fake business plans and fake users being created to attract venture capital investment. Firms like Sequoia, Andreessen Horowitz, and Excel had so much money that they couldn't invest into new ideas fast enough. This started to encourage hopeful founders to fudge their numbers a bit to get a life-changing investment. There were companies that used that money and did build out a real business. But there were other companies that had to keep on lying as more and more investors piled in. If you were a company founder trying to be completely honest about your business, you would have found it much harder to get an audience with these investors to pitch your idea because you were competing with other founders who weren't afraid to stretch the truth or flat out lie to tell investors what they wanted to hear. The venture capital firms that lived by the Silicon Valley mantra of growth at all costs didn't even care because even if the companies they were invested in never made a profit, they could hype them up enough to sell them to strategic investors or dump their trash on the general public through a SPAC. Cases like Charlie Javis, who faked millions of users on her app Frank before selling it to JP Morgan for $175 million, or Abraham Shafi's IRL, another app that had millions of daily users that raised $150 million at a $1 billion valuation, before an investigation by the board found that 95% of its users were also completely fake. From just these two fake apps, that is a total of $325 million that could have been invested in real startups. But there are five reasons why fraud beats honesty almost every time. The first reason that fraud has done so well, even though people are more aware of it than ever, is because nobody bothers checking anymore. While good, honest companies and people are held down with honesty and regulations, scammers and fraudsters can just lie about how great their business is. The reason that they can get away with this for so long today is because fewer people are checking. According to the remarks of their own administrators, organizations like the Securities and Exchange Commission, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the Federal Trade Commission don't have enough resources to regulate market activity. According to the SEC enforcement results from 2022, the agency is now relying mostly on whistleblowers to prosecute pump and dump schemes, securities manipulation, and insider trading. Now, you all know about government regulators being underfunded, but the private sector also failed as well. FTX, Theranos, and WeWork all raised billions of dollars from sophisticated investors that did very little due diligence to verify the lofty claims of the founders. Low interest rates, a hype around venture capital investing, and the growing popularity of SPACs meant that there was a lot of investor money looking for the next big thing. Eccentric founders had the luxury of shopping around for investors who were all desperate to get their money into whatever company was generating the most buzz. And the companies that could generate the most buzz were the ones that could just lie about doing something that could change the world, if only it were true. From my personal experience working as an investment banker in the healthcare space, less exciting companies that are honest about their realistic objectives are drowned in due diligence by more experienced private equity professionals, while companies making wild claims about changing the landscape of the medical world are waved through by venture capitalists that think they are much smarter than they really are. Now, big companies are getting ripped off by founders with questionable attire, but that's not where most of the fraud is happening. Most fraud is targeted at regular people. And even if they don't make any dumb mistakes themselves, offloading the cost of scams onto people has become more lucrative than ever thanks to two other concerning trends. So it's time to learn how money works to find out why the world thinks everything is a scam, except for scams. This week's lesson is sponsored by Trade Coffee. With the holiday season coming up, I can't think of a better gift for yourself or someone else than Trade Coffee. I used to drink coffee just as a way to get me going. But when I started tasting good coffee with Trade, I realized that you really shouldn't sacrifice taste just for energy. And I'm never going back to that disgusting old coffee. 
Trade Coffee makes coffee exciting. Connecting me with over 450 coffees from over 55 roasters, including dark roasts, espressos, blends, and rare roasts. Their matching algorithm curates the perfect coffee match for you based on your taste preferences and surprises you with a new variety every time. For example, it knows what I like, and it matched me with Huckleberry Flores Bellas. It's a medium roast that's sweet and smooth, perfect for what I like. Fresh coffee is better coffee, and the coffee will always be shipped within 48 hours of being roasted. Get a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase by going to drinktrade.com forward slash how money works. With free shipping, customizable plans, and anytime cancellation, Trade is making it easier to discover better coffee. Big companies with sophisticated investors knew the risks of doing no due diligence. And investing hype is finally shifting away from firms promising to be the Uber of in-office kombucha taps. But people suspecting everything of being a scam, apart from scams, the paradox of the grift, if you will, does a lot more harm to normal people who don't have the time or resources to thoroughly vet every offer they are given. The people being hurt the most by these smaller scale frauds are not who you would expect. The most common victim of financial fraud is not elderly people with deteriorating mental capacity getting targeted by scam callers claiming to be the IRS. According to data by the FTC, these scams do fool millions of people every year, and more should be done about that to educate and protect people at risk. It sucks that every single email, text message, and phone call needs to be analyzed for sketchy links and it can be exhausting, but at least it's possible with a bit of attention to stay on the right side of these scams. But the fastest growing category of financial fraud is much harder to protect yourself against. And to show you why, we need to talk about influencers. Seeking fame and fortune is nothing new, and people running get-rich-quick schemes on late-night cable are nothing new either, but technological and cultural changes have allowed these people to merge into one. I don't want to reveal my age here too much, but back in my day, celebrities were afraid of being labeled as sellouts. They had to be very tactful about promoting their merch or their fans would turn on them. Today, selling out is the goal. Modern celebrities and influencers are celebrated for launching a new product line and go on interviews where they talk extensively about how much money they make. There is nothing wrong with celebrities making money, and some influencer businesses sell great products, but a lot don't, and a lot get much worse. According to a 2021 survey conducted by the FTC on consumer losses through scams, 61% of all fraud contacts initiated on social media and websites. Email, online ads, phone calls, and text messages were all fighting for whatever was left. The people you watch and trust online are by far the most likely to scam you. Influencers know that their influence won't last forever. Tastes change, their audience will outgrow their content, or they could be caught up in controversies that gets them kicked out of their respective platform. That's show business. But the problem for the new age of celebrity is that the antics that they self-publish onto the internet would make it impossible for a lot of them to get a real job afterwards. So they need to make enough money in their few years of fame to fund their lavish lifestyle forever. It's not impossible to do legitimately, but it's much easier to do by jumping on the latest trends. If you are an influencer and you know your audience is eventually going to get bored of you anyway, it's very tempting to make as much money as possible off them on the way out. And that's the second reason why people think everything is a scam, apart from scams. Fraud is exciting. Reality is depressing. Imagine you had $10,000 to spare, and you are deciding where to put it. A BlackRock broad market exchange traded fund or a crypto token from a YouTuber. I really hope you all watching know what the right choice is. On a different corner of the internet, you will see people hyping up very risky plays to an impressionable audience while making laser eye video thumbnails about how BlackRock secretly rules the world. One of the biggest business and finance influencers in the world, Patrick Bet David, has made countless videos talking about the dangers of Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street while defending multi-level and network marketing, including his own multi-level marketing life insurance company. BlackRock is not a faultless business, but your money will be safer with them than it will be with the average influencer. My friend Richard over on The Plain Bagel made a great video about why investing won't make you rich. It can only build wealth by accelerating diligent savings. But that's boring, and that kind of content doesn't make as much money or perform as well with the algorithm as flashy displays of material wealth and non-compliant claims about making money. Even influencers not peddling get-rich-quick schemes need to over-sensationalize everything to maximize engagement. I know I pick on Graham a lot, but judging by his thumbnails, this guy has been bankrupt four times this year alone. Influencers are an easy target for ridicule, and I understand as a now full-time YouTuber myself, it's tempting to use the flames and laser eyes. But it all builds a culture of getting as much attention as possible, as quickly as possible, and then trading that influence for cash. 
The biggest problem is that there appears to be very few consequences for doing this. People like Logan Paul, who at the height of the cryptocurrency mania promoted several pump and dump schemes, has to date had no problems with regulators who are struggling to keep up in this area as well. He also hasn't even taken that much reputational damage and still has millions of fans watching his videos and buying prime energy drinks. Another friend of the channel, Patrick Boyle, in an interview with Zeke Fox, an investigative reporter for Bloomberg, and author of Number Go Up, said that the grift is not something to be embarrassed about anymore. It's now seen as high status, because the most visibly high status people are all doing it. Fox also claimed that investigations into this matter almost don't make sense anymore, because the perpetrators of this kind of fraud are so unashamed and open about it that an investigative journalist doing an expose on Dink Doink would be like a food critic writing a review on Taco Bell. And that's the third reason why we think everything is a scam apart from scams. Fraud moves faster than we do. New technologies like cryptocurrencies, AI, and the internet all may have legitimate marketable uses, but it can take years for people to figure out what those use cases are and years more to build businesses around them. It's little wonder then that the new technologies are a golden opportunity for fraud. By promising to know the secrets to using something new to make lots of money, grifters can leverage the natural hype of barely understood tech to sell a guide on how to use it for a profit. The hustle bros that were selling crypto trading guides when Bitcoin was entering the mainstream are now telling you how to use ChatGPT to make millions by automating some vaguely legitimate sounding online business. This problem hits every level of finance, not just core scammers. The venture capital funds that were throwing investor money at blockchain companies are now throwing investor money at anything that claims to use AI. And the influencers that were crypto experts now know how to use ChatGPT to make $300 a day. The rapid pace of new technologies that people are desperate to understand is behind the rapid pace of new frauds pretending to know the answers. The reason that people are so desperate for the answers is also the fourth reason that they are so willing to convince themselves that a scam is not a scam. People are desperate. I don't need to say too much about this one. According to Lending Club data, 62% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Nobody earning minimum wage can afford to rent a basic two-bedroom apartment anywhere in the country. People have to jump through up to 17 interviews to get a job. Interest rates are rising, basic essentials are twice what they cost five years ago, and most people don't think there is any hope of changing that. The housing crisis in the United States is real. It is incredibly difficult for people to buy a home. Sad as four in 10 consumers consider themselves worse off than last year. Anything promising a way out of a no hope situation looks good to a lot of people. The fifth reason why we now think everything is a scam apart from scams is because the outlets that were supposed to be keeping us informed about this have also decided that there is more money in sensationalism. Go and watch the 200 year decline of journalism over on How History Works to find out how we let that happen. I am also going to be writing a full article on fraud culture in finance from the perspective of a former investment banker. So if you want to catch that and other articles written by myself and some of the best finance creators, make sure to sign up in my totally free email newsletter in the description below to keep on learning how money works.